This series is brought to you by you. Thank you so much for all of my patrons and the people who have used the Jackson's affiliate links. It is thanks to you guys that this series have been made possible. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the Colossal Color Showdown in which I compare 12 amazing brands in the same name color. This is episode 13 and we're going to be taking a look at the Vermilion. And very excitingly, and this is the thing that I really wanted to work with in this season was to try and bring some of the genuine colors for the colors that are most commonly replaced now with modern synthetic other kind of pigments. And in this episode, we do have the Vermilion Genuine. Now, Vermilion, Genuine Vermilion is made with cinnabar which is basically mercury sulfide and it's very toxic. It is a dense, opaque pigment and it ranges somewhere from bright orange to like a more duller, redder, purplier kind of color. Its pigment code is PR106 and that is shared between the genuine cinnabar and synthetic cinnabar, which is a synthesized version of mercuric sulfide, which is even more toxic. So it's a very toxic pigment and it fades in light and sometimes it can turn darker. So I can see why the watercolor industry went maybe not the cinnabar thing and developed loads of replacement colors that didn't use the genuine stuff. But I do have Wallace and Seymour's Vermilion Genuine PR106 106 and as you can see it's a lot lot duller than all the modern versions of the color and I wouldn't use this on its own as this is the color it's supposed to be because it has a range of colors and it really depends on what kind of pigment you use. Now vermilion in China and Japan is also known as shu and it's a very very important ceremonial color and it's usually used in name stamps like hankos and stuff as well as lacquerware that is bright reddy orangey color. Now in this episode we have the Wallace and Seymour that we just talked about, the organic vermilion by Daniel Smith, Vermilion by Holbein, Vermilion by Schmincke, French Vermilion by Sennelier, Vermilion by Mission Gold, Vermilion by Dela Rowney, Vermilion by Rembrandt, Vermilion Pyro by Block X, and Vermilion Extra by Old Holland, Vermilion Hue by Ken Bromley, and Vermilion by Cassart. If you haven't heard of these two brands, Ken Bromley and Cassart, they are UK based brands that have their own range of paints, but I kind of suspect that Cassart is a subsidiary of whoever makes Sennelier paints because they're very similar and they come in exactly the same tube. But there's all sorts of debate that we won't get into in this video because otherwise then you'll get really really long. So in terms of hue there is a range of red to orange. The Vermilion Pyrolo by Block X is definitely the most orange. It's by far the most orange one and I'm not sure if I would call this a vermilion color. A little bit too orange. The other colors that are a little bit orangish leaning on the orange is the Rembrandt one, Holbein one and the Mission Golds one. I would say Block X the most orange, then second Mission Girl, then Rembrandt, then Holbein. It is supposed to be orangey ready colour though. In terms of how smoothly things went down, I was really impressed with the Ken Bromley one. It went on really smooth on this very very cheap Fabriano Academia paper. The Schmincke one went down really well as well. So these two, if you use cheap paper, then I recommend these two because they behave much better and go more smoother and less streaky on this compromised circumstances. <laughs> the only problem with the Ken Bromley one though is that it was hard to re-wet like noticeably harder to re-wet. So if easy to re-wet is your priority or maybe you live somewhere that's really dry and hot and paints are just hard to re-wet anyway, then maybe not this one. Cassart and Sennelier were both very, very easy to re-wet because they have the honey. So that would be great for people who live in hot, warm, dry countries. I did have a problem with the data around you one and you can vaguely see what's happened, but bubbles appeared after putting the paint down and they've kind of left the marks on the paint. Now to me, you guys don't have to agree with it because this is me personally, I think that's terrible for a paint and that's a deal breaker for me because why do we have bubbles that suddenly appear and just <laughs> ruin your painting? You don't want that in your paint. So that is a very big negative for the Dale and Rowling. Let's take a look at the prices and alternative colors. Let's look at the alternative colors first. I have two alternative colors, 
Holbein has a vermilion hue is really confusing because vermilion isn't genuine vermilion to begin with. It's mixture of cadmium orange with cadmium red. So it's a cadmium red orange color. It's not a vermilion, but they also have a vermilion hue version, which is made with PO73, PR254 and PY110. They are very similar. I would say the vermilion hue is a little bit lighter. I personally have the vermilion hue on my palette as my ready orange color because it re-wets well, it hits the right spot on the color wheel for me and I just find that the vermilion hue behaves better and it's easier to re-wear and all those things compared to the vermilion by Holbein. We also have the Schmincke has a vermilion light which is made with PR188 whereas the vermilion is made with PR255 which is Pyrrol Scarlet. Let's take a look at the prices and the most expensive in the UK is the Vermino Genuine by Wallace Seymour but that's to be expected. Wallace Seymour is very expensive and it is a genuine stuff. It's also very dangerous to work in so you are kind of paying the danger money. It is £2.64 per milliliter or £13.90 for a little 5 millimeter tube. When we're talking about the hues, so basically everything other than the Wallace Seymour, the most expensive in the UK is Holbein at £22 per 15 milliliter, which is ridiculous. The cheapest one in the UK is the Kemp Bromley one at £3.84 for 40 milliliters or 27 pence per milliliter. That's really, really affordable. In the US, Old Holland Vermilio Extra is the most expensive at $2.61 per milliliter. And the cheapest one is the French Vermilion by Sennelier, which is 59 cents per milliliter. Let's now take a look at the opacity. And Genuine Vermilion is supposed to be this quite opaque color and indeed with the what a Seymour genuine one it is very opaque and in that sense the closest ones that behave in same kind of opacity are the Holbein and the Schmincke one these two are the most opaque ones. I'm ignoring the block X because it's very patchy but also it's a little bit too orange for what I would call a vermilion. You do have some transparent or more transparent colors. The Daniel Smith one, the Sennelier one and the Cass Art one is a lot more transparent so if you are looking for that transparency in that same kind of hue then that is a really good option. I always like to see an opacity test that has a wide variety of opacity because then that means you can pick the same hue but in different levels of opacity depending on what you want from it. And then we have the lift and glaze. First of all, I have to apologize that there's some patchiness here, that's entirely my fault. I must have got some grease from my hand to here between the first layer and the second layer. So I'm very sorry about that. In terms of lift, they're pretty much the same. I would say that the Schmincke one is a little bit more staining than others. And the old Holland one is a little bit more lifting than others. But either way, it's going to be pretty hard to lift these colors once you put it down. So be careful where you put it down. In terms of glaze, I think the best glazing was done by Block X. But you can really see that this is very orangey color compared to the other vermilions. If you just gave me a non-labeled swatch of this then I would never call this a vermilion. Interestingly with the Rembrandt you see almost two tony happening on this sample. It's got the little bit of red but it also has the yellow coming through which is correct because you do have a red pigment and a yellow pigment. Now all the other ones are either single pigment red or mixed with another the pigment that's orange rather than yellow so there's less split of that color whereas this definitely suffers from that slight jewel toneness which is not a bad thing if you're looking for a more textured kind of more variance in your vermilion then Rembrandt will be a great option but it's just something to keep in mind on if you want a uniform color. I would say the worst one for glazing is Ken Bromley and Cassart. These guys are not very good. There's lots of lift, unevenness. In terms of colors that are great for glazing and isn't a bright orange, it's quite hard to decide. I would say the Rembrandt one glazes very well and I would say that the Holboy one 
would have probably glazed really well if I hadn't ruined the sample, so I'm very, very sorry about that. So I would go for either of these two. If you like to try these vermilion colors, but you don't want to pay for full tubes, then I've got your back. This month's Patreon exclusive dot card is the companion dot card to this episode. It is the vermilion and you have eight vermilion colors, including the genuine stuff. So if you've ever, ever wanted to try a vermilion genuine, but you know it's the really expensive and you just never wanted to pay that much, this is your chance. We have the vermilion genuine by Wallace Seymour, the Dennis Smith one, Holbein one, Schmincke one, Sennelier one, De La Rowney, Rembrandt and Old Holland. It's a great way to test eight different colours without having to buy eight different tubes. It's a huge saving in money and there's so much paint on there that you can definitely test it out to your heart's content to make sure it's right for you, it works with your palette and you get to pick the perfect one for you. If you'd like to receive this dot card then all you have to do is head on over to patreon.com forward slash autocano and sign up to the appropriate tiers and this card will be with you very shortly. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to go over the gradation, the salt test, what it looks like on cotton paper and how it mixes with other colours. So do look forward to that next week. In the meantime, what do you think of these colours? Do let me know in the comments down below which one is your favourite vermilion that you already use. If this video has changed your mind, do let me know which colour you prefer instead. All the links down below to where you can get these paints, please do use them if this video has convinced you to try a new colour. Also, high risk scan of all my test sheets are over on patreon.com forward slash autocarna so do check that out and i will see you in the next video bye